September 28th, St. Wenceslas, also pronounced Wenceslas in the Germanic languages, or Vakalav in Czech. St. Wenceslas was born toward the end of the 9th century. He was the son of a Christian duke of Bohemia, but his mother was a harsh and cruel pagan. His holy grandmother, Ludmilla, seeing the danger to the future king, asked to bring him up. Wenceslas was educated by her good offices in the true faith, and under her tutelage acquired an exceptional devotion to the Blessed Sacrament. At the death of his father, however, he was still a minor, and his mother assumed the government and passed a series of persecuting laws. In the interests of the faith, Fenselas, encouraged by his grandmother, claimed and obtained, through the support of the people, a large portion of the country as his own kingdom. Soon afterwards, his grandmother was martyred out of hatred of her and her faith and the services to her country, while she was making thanksgiving after Holy Communion. His mother secured the apostasy and the alliance of her second son, who became henceforth her ally against the Christians. Fenselas, meanwhile, ruled as a brave and pious king, providing for all the needs of his people, and when his kingdom was attacked, overcame, in single combat, by the sign of the cross, the leader of an invading army. In the year 961, Emperor Otto I of Germany called Wenceslas to the Diet of Worms and conferred every attention on him. One day, Wenceslas was at prayer in church and lost track of time. When he finally arrived at the assembly, the emperor and other princes, irritated by his delay, had resolved to not rise, as was the custom given to sovereigns when they entered the room. When Wenceslas appeared at the threshold of the hall, however, the nobles saw that he was flanked by two angels. Overcome by admiration and respect, the emperor stood to receive him and gave him his place of honor at his right. How could the nobles deny this honor to him when angels themselves paid him their respects? As a sign of his consideration, the emperor gave him two precious relics, an arm of St. Vitus and the bones of another valiant warrior sovereign, St. Sigismund, King of Burgundy. In the service of God he was most constant, and he never failed to assist at daily mass. His piety was the occasion of his death, however. Once, after a banquet at his brother's palace, to which he had been treacherously invited, he went, as was his custom at night, to pray, and there, at midnight, on the feast of the angels in the year 938, he received a crown of martyrdom by the sword at the hand of his own brother. We wonder today, why don't things like this angelic apparition happen in our time? Why don't we have manifestations of the supernatural that cover the good with glory and smash the evil? Could it be that the sins of mankind have reached such an apex that men no longer deserve such apparitions? The angels that accompanied St. Menselas were not there principally for him. He probably did not even see them. But they were there for the public who witnessed this miracle. It was for the good of others that they appeared. Today, if angels were to appear, they would most probably raise hatred in the onlookers. Are the hearts of the public today so hard as stones that only a chastisement can change them? When miracles like these no longer happen, it is the sign that divine providence has abandoned a certain people or a particular cycle of civilization. Let us all pray to St. Venceles to be prepared for the chastisements predicted by Our Lady of Fatima, so that mankind will enter another age where God will be honored and glorified, and miracles will again take place.